This is a sponsored video about Crowd Cow. If you eat meat and you want to make sure it was raised responsibly, the easiest thing you can do is look for a label like organic, free range, antibiotic free, for example. Labels can be useful, but they have their limitations. For myself as a consumer, I tend to think the best strategy is to find specific farmers and ranchers whom I know and whom I trust to make smart, conscientious decisions out there. Crowd Cow is an online meat market, the express purpose of which is to help us find those farmers and ranchers so we can buy awesome food from them. As you browse Crowd Cow, you'll find that some of the product is USDA certified organic, but not all of it is. And why isn't it all organic? Well, here's one example. One day, Joe Heitzberg was out in Montana checking out a really big cattle ranch, thousands of acres. Joe is a co-founder of Crowd Cow, and he was out in Montana helping a rancher mend fences. No, I don't mean make peace. I mean literally mend the fence that keeps the cattle in the right pasture. So we're way out there, and he pulls out uh, one of the fence posts, and he says, well, this is why we're not organic, and he chucks it into a pile. And I said, what do you mean you're not organic? And he said, well, these are treated wood uh, fence posts, and so we can't be organic. Now, that is not as crazy as it sounds. To keep wood from rotting outdoors, you have to pressure treat it, and those chemicals do leach into the environment and potentially end up in the food. That's a real thing and can be a real problem in certain situations. But treated fence posts out on giant ranches are hardly the biggest problem in our food system, and ranchers have to balance their use against other very important interests. To use untreated wood, They'd have to chop down a forest of trees every year and replace all that fence every year. And so I said, well, if you ever do become organic, let me know, because we don't want to sell your beef. Now, we do not offer that example as an indictment of the USDA organic program. Joe will tell you, in his opinion, it's one of the better certification standards that are out there. Unlike many other labels, USDA organic is actually spelled out in exhaustive detail by a government authority, and the standards are enforced by inspectors. But it's just the nature of the beast that when you make policy, you have to draw arbitrary lines, and you don't always draw them in exactly the right place for every situation. Plus, there is legitimate debate over what exactly is right. I had a, a farmer that was um, complaining to me. She was down a dirt road, four-hour drive, kind of middle of nowhere, and she was not qualified for an anim a certain animal welfare standard. Why not? Well, because she spays her cows, surgically sterilizes them. There are humane ways to do that. No doubt, historically, some less humane methods have been used. And this particular animal welfare certifier says, no spaying. Why do you need to spay your heifers? She said, well, out here, I've got, again, range land. So they go miles and miles away. And if they're not spayed and the neighbor's bull hops the fence and they get pregnant, that's a real big problem out here. Because I can't support uh, the, uh, the heifer giving birth way out there, and if something goes wrong, and that's that's an animal welfare issue, right? For me, people who make food have to make a lot of choices. And every day that I make food videos for you, I become less and less confident that I know what the right choices are. These things are super complicated and debatable. What I want is to buy food from people who are at least thinking about these things. People who are trying to balance human, animal, and environmental welfare with the need to turn a profit. I'm talking about people like Larry Tebbin here. He raises American Wagyu beef in South Texas. You can buy his stuff on Crowd Cow. You want to look for a product that's uh, basically antibiotic free. Notice that he said, basically. We use it, we, you know, we hardly ever have to use an antibiotic. And if we'll do that to save a, a calf's life if we can, to get sick with pneumonia or something like that. Farm animals are just like us. Sometimes they get super sick. And when that happens, yeah, you give them medicine. The problem with antibiotics is their overuse. Lots of producers use antibiotics prophylactically. Rather than providing the animals with a healthy environment and a healthy diet like this, you just load them up with drugs to prevent illness that may or may not even strike. Other producers also use antibiotics to make the animals grow faster. The precise mechanism of this is something that scientists are still working out, but one possibility is that you give the animal antibiotics even when they're not sick, 
And what happens is food energy that the animal takes in goes to tissue growth instead of maybe getting diverted into normal immune function. Now, hey, boosting productivity is great. If you can get more food out of the same animal in less time, then that's probably good for sustainability. But there is a specific problem with overusing antibiotics. Things build up a, a resistance to antibiotics and then also uh, I believe there's some evidence that shows that the antibiotics aren't completely out of the animal or the egg or whatever when the meat's processed. So yeah, antibiotics may be a problem, but I am wary of some of the antibiotic-free labels that are out there because I want them to allow for flexibility. I want farmers to be able to use medicine when appropriate. I don't want rigid adherence to orthodoxy. What I want is somebody to just be out there making good judgments, judgments that generally align with my values as a human being on this planet. So what is a conscientious consumer to do? get to know beyond the issues, beyond the labels. Who are the people raising the animals? How did they get into it? What was their history? Why are they doing it? And what are some of their practices that they're doing to adapt to their own heritage, breed, or local ecosystem that are unique to them? Those things are really special, really valuable to you as a consumer and aren't covered by any label program. Honestly, one thing that I often do is look to see if a small farm has like a vigorous social media presence. If an actual human being, an actual farmer is out there posting a lot with pride about all the things that they do and why, that's usually a pretty good sign. The problem is that most farmers are old. And that's actually in and of itself a whole other problem that we should talk about another day, generational succession in farming. But anywho, most small independent farmers are like older folks who are not super savvy with the internets and you're not going to be able to find them on social media so much. So CrowdCow is a really good way to find them. So for anything we do, we're looking for a quality, an assortment, stories, connection back to the farms and, and one click away to a blog post where if you want to go as deep as you, as you feel like it, you can go all the way. Thanks for your work at CrowdCow, Joe, and thanks to CrowdCow for sponsoring this video and, by extension, my work here on the channel. And you, do us both a favor and save some money by using my link in the description, crowdcow.com slash ragusia. There's all kinds of beef, including Wagyu. There's chickens that haven't lived their whole lives in a tiny box. There's pork that hasn't had all the flavor bred out of it. There's fish, the eating of which will not be immediately devastating to an ecosystem, etc. And you can buy a big box of stuff and throw it in the freezer. It arrives perfectly flash frozen. You want to get stuff from boutique producers, it's going to be frozen and that is just fine. If you join the herd and become a CrowdCowd member, you get free shipping on orders over 99 bucks, plus 5% off everything. And new members can get $100 of free meat plus free shipping if you sign up and order with my link, crowdcow.com slash ragusia. That's in the description box below. This promotion is extremely limited, so act fast, crowdcow.com slash ragusia. As I've told you before, I'm actually eating a lot less meat. And when I do, I am investing in stuff that is better in every sense of that word. One way to get better stuff is to get to know the person you're getting it from. Go get to know them.